I'm here with CS Darren Nolan. He's going to talk us all through at the Passing Out Parade today. CS Nolan, what is the significance of the Bloods and the 3rd Battalion here? What is the history? Well, the history of the 3rd Battalion goes back a long way. Um, off top head, it goes back to the 1920s, when it was actually established up in Ulster. But then, during that time as well, uh, there was a number of garrisons up there, and they were put together, which formed the 3rd Battalion. And, but then that years when the state emergency arrived, um, the Turbotine was actually sent down to the southeast to protect the southeast because it was such a large area between Dublin, Cork, and you got the, the southeast coast there as well. So this was all before you had the barracks in Wexford and Waterford and all that. Like so, but then in the '98, then um, because they were they were stating the um, the Curra, so when Kilkenny was here and as well, like uh, it was the Turbotine Battalion. But then in 1998, then it was changed. Then it was magnetized into third battalion. Then so so that's we lost the third, but we came third battalion blood. So it was moved. The, the, that time the HQ was brought down. Uh, there was still a unit up there. B Company was up there in, in the Cora. He still held the, the bloods as well, the third battalion um, title as well. But then a number of years ago, then it was turned to one Mekai, and then we we're just we got transferred into the the bloods, the third battalion then. Because I often be talking to the, the veterans, and they, yeah. any veterans who come from the Bloods, <laughs> they'd be so proud to say we're from the Bloods. The Bloods. It, it is. It's just a long history there as well. Like I mean, he, like my father was was in the army as well for 21 years. He left in '97, but he was always the third battalion. But he did train in the Corps as well, third battalion. But so, uh, even he, talking to the the veterans here, I mean, because it, it held so much a long stature up in the Corps. It was kind of a, a, tra- a, tra- a big train establishment there for so long, and it had a lot of history as well. It trained a lot of people going through. I mean, for same thing as about here, we have a platoon here now passing out. Some of them will go to Cork and, and Galway and all that. Or whatever. same like with the Curra, the Turb were up there was a big train establishment for a group of tunes and I was training in 97 with her playing then and a few of us left there to come to Kenny, a few others went in other units as well like so there's a big long history there not just the turbo time but other units have their own history as well which is great and plus then we have not a big sense of pride here to be related to the turbo time. Brigadier General Patrick Flynn will arrive on parade accompanied by the officer commanding the third division battalion and military honours will be rendered. The two commander, second Lieutenant Tennessee, will then invite the general officer commanding one brigade to inspect the NCOs and 17 recruits on parade. Following the inspection, each row of recruits will then march forward and receive their certificates from the GOC 1 Brigade Brigadier General Flynn. Following the receipt of certificates, GSC 1 Brigade and OC 3rd Infantry Battalion will then present the Best Shot Award, James Stevens Award, and finally the Best Soldier Award. So at the moment, then you've got the um, will then perform a drill Sergeant event. Wheeling, right? Bring the Pacific Finally, GSC 1 Brigade and Justin Wheeling. Lesser in formation, then you hand over to the left and then left and then. So the ceremony will then be concluded and refreshments will be available in the dining complex and the NCO of Mr. Stevens Barracks. It's a very proud day to put in the kids today. Oh, it is, yeah. So as the LT says, long up uh, during training, you know what I mean? And this is like, the final day to put everything they done during training and pra- practice, you know? So we got the foot drill, the weapons drill, but also most importantly they're working as a team then to show what they can do. And it's a very robust training, isn't it? Very physically robust. Not just physically, training. That, that's what it demands, you know what I mean? You get introduction to the mission career, you know? And we did a little bit of a reach. The good training is the basis of all that, like. There's a lot of effort and training uh, put into this parade, isn't it? Oh, there is, uh, especially the last couple of weeks um, when they come off the, the final phase on the ground. They put a lot of effort in this then to make sure everything's uh, the I's, the and T's crossed as far as you know. And would this be the first day that they're wearing the number one, the number one. sign? No, it wouldn't be. Um, they did a lot of dress rehearsal as well. They did a lot of inspections then during the course of the train as well. So once they get, after the first initial two weeks, they start getting all their kit. And when they get the number ones then, they're showing how to look after the uh, iron. And then have the parades then, every week then, with the, with the lieutenant then. So it makes sure they're up to high standard for these parades. So then after the train then, doing three-star course, same thing. But when they're finished as a, as a three-star, they can actually maintain their number ones then during the career. So, cool. yeah. It's a very proud moment for the recruits to put on the number ones, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, anytime you put on a uniform, it's a bit of pride there as yes. well. 
and they're probably looking to the left and right and then with the train and CO so you see there's medals there as well, a lot of experience in overseas and at home. So they're probably looking towards that, what can I do to achieve this? Not just going overseas but he's one coming in NCO as well, either a corporal or, or a sergeant like Sergeant Wheeler, you know. What's happening now? So basically now he's just ready now. He has the platoon ready. Now the lieutenant who's over the platoon is walking on to parade and he'll get a handover from the sergeant. Now the handover is complete now, so Sergeant Wheel is going to the rear. And the, the lieutenant is, is holding a ceremony sword. That's right, Tell yeah. me about that. Well, that's the only time doing the praise themselves, all right, that's what they carry. Um, oh. Instead of weapons, we were the ones carrying carry the weapons, oh. and they have to carry the sword, so it's a kind of a, a symbol of command and authority, so. Now he's lowering the sword to rest the position. Now we're just preparing for the arrival of the GOC. So we're waiting on the GOC to yeah. arrive onto the parade square, but th we were just talking earlier about the very severe, robust training for the um, yeah. for the first recruits. Yeah. And um, after this training, after the passing out, they're going to be having the continuity training yeah. of going into the. That's right. So they go into the CSR course, which is be fourteen weeks long, and this is. is uh, that kind of training is more enjoyable because you get more hands-on type of training that, or types of exercise that we do um, in relation to outside at home and abroad. So in relation to what we do with Aid, um, aid of Silver Power, we do the Gardaí, uh, so you've got card and searches and so forth, onto operations then overseas. So it's a lot more robust, but it's, it's more, in, more enjoyable, you know what I mean? So, a lot and of hands-on. Yes, and also within the recruit training, there's an offer, it's not just physically robust training, it's also mentally and emotionally robust training as it well. It is, and you do with, with the Army, I mean, you have to be, mental toughness is a big thing. So, I mean, you, you, cannot, you can run through walls as much as you can, but if you don't have the, the mental toughness to see things through, you know I mean, that's where you fall down on then. So, yeah, and to, with the Army then, that it prepares you for it, it shows you how to deal with things. At the end, then you should be able to deal with certain aspects of the military life. So. And I'm talking from experience myself, because my son yeah. is a, a member of the Defence Force. I remember when my f son came home after the first week of mm. recruit training, I noticed straight away yeah. that even in his yeah. posture and yeah. the way he walked, there's a great sense of pride. There is a pride, yeah. And you're able to look after yourself. Um, you probably saw him do his washing a bit more, or iron the small bit, you know, because he, he's shown, he okay, not washing, iron, but, yeah. but even iron number ones, you yes. know, I mean, you spend time at that, making sure the, the creases are ironed properly, and you, you probably see that carried on to maybe if he was, he was suits at home for weddings, yes. I mean, you see a lot more of that, like, but this, yeah, you, this, they take pride in themselves, you know, what I mean, they're, they're told that, look, you're in the army now, you get head up, you have to think above the rest now, you know what I mean, so, yeah. And this is also a very proud day, not just for the recruits, it's a very proud day for their families. Oh, big time, yeah. And I know for me it was a very yeah, proud yeah. day, so I can just imagine what all the mums and dads and sisters, and it was, and also not just for the families and the recruit training, but for the defence force as well. It is um, a big thing for the family as well. I mean, they're putting a lot of time and effort into this, but especially the mother and fathers, if you've got young lads or girls there, they're, they're single, whatever, like, I mean, they're, co they're away all week, they're coming back, and their, their parents are helping out. I got helped out big time, you know what I mean? When I joined up, but um, it, to come here then to see the, f the final product, you could say, the final moment for them, like for the recruit train, and see what they can put into practice, what they learned, you know what I mean? And you see they the, the have the heads up held high for the parents or the, the girlfriends or boyfriends. You know what I mean? Even the girlfriends and boyfriends, to, to people are here as well. Like a big, big day for them as well. Like, yes. you know what I mean? What responsibilities they have back at home, you know what I mean? And they're letting go of that for this duration. And plus, there's going to be another 14 weeks then after this as well, like, you know? So that's the so they're kind of marrying into the army themselves, yeah. And we, is it, there's a big sense of family uh, unity within the defence forces, isn't there? Oh, there is. You know, I mean, we, if you get to like we're all a family here. That if someone can't do something, there's always someone beside you to pick it up. Mm. You know what I mean? That's the best thing. Look, I know a job outside, but we're here with us. I mean. If someone's feeling down themselves, if you can't do something, a certain job, a task, there's always there to, to pick it up, especially overseas. When they go overseas now and hopefully in the future, there's always someone there left and right to give them a hand, you know what I mean? So it's, long, it's not just six months, you got the time beforehand and the time after that they can readjust. Come That's on. the GOC the of GOC. this, so, yeah. And being come by the um, lieutenant commander.
Run! Arrah! So at the moment now, the platoon is getting ready for a generous salute for the GOC. Run! Curtis General Alta! Turkey! It's like what did Sergeant, he done a handover to the lieutenant, now the lieutenant is doing a handover to the GOC, so we're ready for inspection. So, we have to give an honour to the GOC, so I've asked them then to uh, inspect the, the parade. So he's walking forward to inspect the parade, but he probably stopped to one or two. <laughs> Music is being performed by the Defence Forces. Band. That's right, the band. That's right. Yeah. So that's totally their job then to go around to all the, all the ceremonies um, or special occasions. Band, yeah. So they were here all. They were travelling up from uh, Cork. They were here all week as well, practicing and rehearsing as well, along with the platoon. So. We were talking earlier about the pr how pr proud it was for the families and the recruits but, and the Defence Forces itself. But it's a very proud day for Kilkenny. Oh, yeah, of course it is. I mean, um, it's, it's, it's about being active here as well. I mean, to induct uh, new recruits to the Army, especially the Turbantine here in Kilkenny. So, because the more enormous we get here, they, the better it be for our job as well, to help the community as well. and for local events and all that, you know what I mean? Any help that we can give to the community benefits us as well, you know what I mean? And, and the community as well. Because this year, the 3rd Battalion was very, very active within the community. You hosted um, under Lieutenant Colonel Mert Larkin the um, summer barbecue, an auction for the Yes, uh, uh, the yeah, I heard that was a good uh, success as well. Like, I mean, after getting bigger since last year, so they still looked at what can we do more for the community, and that was one for the Good Shepherd as well. I don't know actually how much they do earn, but I heard it was a good bit like, like and that's it, yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of lot of stuff auctioned off it was was great, like and they had a few bands and comedians that night. That's right. Yeah, I think it was the same time as the the Castle Laugh, so wasn't that's it? Right, yeah, that's yeah. it. So it was brilliant. And it was all uh, the third battalion under Lieutenant Colonel Mert Larkin have also done an awful lot for all charities like Chuck Tom. Yeah, um, Chuck Tom. Yeah, we, I think we've done a. What I know is we've done a few. Uh, uh, cycle events here. We've done a 24 hour cycle event down below the, the hall, and then I know there's a few other events, but like there were a few cycles here ourselves. Yeah, so like, we, we, we try to engage in all the charities, you know what I mean? Can't just be, can't just be focus on one or two, like try to give, give it all to all of them, you know what I mean? So spread the wealth, as we say. Exactly. Well, yeah, yeah. So. But also, there's a very, Kilkenny is a very strong military city. It is, yeah, for years, yeah, I mean, the barracks are with, with the history that it has. But it's not that it's with the history that it has with all the families as well, like, you know what I mean? I, I know my own family, my own father was in, I have uncles and, and cousins, and my own sister's in it as well. So, I mean, and each one of them probably have other relations in as well, like, you know, so, yeah, big, big strong history here in, yeah. in town, yeah. And not only that, having um, a military barracks here in Kilkenny, it also um, helps the local economy. It does, yeah. You notice there now with uh, all the local shops, especially your spa up the road, I mean, a lot of young lads go up there and that's where they go um, to buy stuff for, for the lunch. But it's not that, you have all the families here as well, like, you know what I mean? Buying stuff for the household and all that, like, but then you got clothing shops down there as well. You know what I mean? It, it, it's, it, it, yeah, it, it does help, you know what I mean? Um, you got over 500 people here in the barracks and it, 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 that doesn't affect the economy. You know what I mean? What doesn't? Does. You know what I mean? I can just imagine what um, all the young recruits who are now thinking and feeling <laughs> with such pride wearing oh, yeah. their number ones and being inspected by the GOC. Well, that's it, like, I mean, he, he, he's our boss man of the South, like, you know what I mean? And if he's going around, then it should be a proud day. I mean, I mean, it's going around inspecting, it should be a proud day. Anyway, anytime you put the number ones on, it's always a proud day. And the sun is coming out as Yeah, it's, it's, it's warm, yeah. 
I got a good day for it now. You did. The light firm. Because we often have the uh, the watershed, the haul up in the watershed That's on right standby here. during bad weather. And it's, I know you get very cramped in it, but it doesn't look good in, you know what I mean, as, as, as a square. So this is where it should be, you know what I mean? I suppose for the families and the mothers, 15 weeks ago was a, a blink in the eye when they brought the sons <laughs> in and the daughters in yeah. and they went through the arch then to sign that's, the declaration. That's it, yeah. I mean, they're saying, oh, look, they, they have high hopes and it's all, oh, are they going to be back with a ticket? But the ones that are here on the square, they're the ones that stuck by, you know what I mean? And they got through it and keep their heads up now for the next 14 weeks, 15 weeks, and they push on through and no doubt they will. Like this is the basis of all ministry training, is the recruit training. So once you get past this, see things away. Oh, I can't wait to finish this. Now, oh, I'm looking at this again. Just always go with a positive attitude now for any course to do now in the army. So. And it's a great achievement for oh, anyone is. to pass out in the passing out. Yeah, it is. I mean, you got a lot, a lot of tests there. And I mean, for the recruit um, training, you got, um, you got your their marching test. You got the, the weapons test. You got on the ranges as well. They pass their, their yes. shooting. Yeah the mag, the GPMG, the Steyr, there's a lot of other tests there as well, you know what I mean? So there's a lot of pressure on them as well, but with, with the guidance and instruction by the NCOs, they need to get through it, you know? The, so after the, the, the becoming now professional soldiers? That's it. Uh, at the moment now, the, the platoon is getting ready, okay? There's going to be a number of recruits brought forward. There's going to be a, the oath. So the, the oath on enlistment is read by a recruit. And the Defence Force of Values will be written out as well. We! 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 They're laying down their weapons now. Yeah, so. We! Just! What they're doing is going to be. We! That's it! Run! So they're just preparing themselves, right, to. Each rank is going to be brought forward and given their certification of their passing out their recruit train. So this is something they can hang up as well, you know what I mean? So at the moment now we have three recruits coming forward. So you've got recruit Keller, okay, he's going to read the oath of allegiance. You've got recruit Wall, and he's going to read Defence Forces Dignity Charter. You've got recruit Callahan, they're going to read the, the values of Defence Forces. So. And with the values then, the rest of the is going to give them a hand as well. The Defence Forces of Ireland are committed to maintaining a work environment whether within the state or when deployed overseas. That encourages and supports the right to dignity at work. All personnel of the Defence Forces are expected to respect the right of each individual to dignity in the work environment and all activities of their service. Command and authority will be exercised in such a manner that all personnel of the Defence Forces are respected for their individuality and diversity and are provided with a tolerant and safe place to work. Bullying, sexual harassment and harassment in any form is not accepted by us and will not be tolerated. Our policies, procedures and actions will underpin the principles and objectives of this charter and contribute to the professional work environment. We recognise that the Defence Forces as a military organisation differs from all other workplaces. However, command and authority is never an excuse for bullying or other harassing behaviour. All personnel of the Defence Forces and civilians or other contractors employed to work for the Defence Forces have a duty and responsibility to uphold this charter. Commanders at all levels have a specific responsibility 
to promote the provisions of this charter. We also expect commanders to lead by example, not only in respect of their own behaviour, but also in response to the behaviour of others. So now you can get to uh, recruit Callan, who's going to read the, the values of Defence Forces. We so, with the help of the platoon. The first value of the Defence Forces is... Respect! Respect starts with self-respect and it should extend to others. We must treat others with dignity, respect, tolerance and understanding. The second value of the Defence Forces is... Loyalty! We must be loyal to our comrades, the Defence Forces in Ireland. Loyalty is the trend that binds us together and causes us to support each other, our family and our country. The third value of the Irish Defence Forces is... Selflessness! Selfless service means placing our duty our, before our personal needs and desires. We must be faithful to Ireland and loyal to the Constitution. The fourth value of the Defence Forces is... Integrity! Integrity means that we demonstrate the highest standards of ethical behaviour and moral values by displaying honesty, sincerity, reliability, consistency and a willingness to speak in an open and straightforward manner. Integrity is vital in the developing of trust among our team. The fifth value of the Defence Forces is... Physical courage! We must have the physical courage to persevere with the mission, despite danger and adversity. The sixth value of the Defence Forces is... Moral courage! We must do what is right, even if our actions are unpopular or challenge prevailing attitudes. Moral courage enables us to speak out clearly against wrongdoing, inappropriate behaviour, rule breaking or a lack of professionalism. Win! Cheat! Lost! Well! Well! Ah! Rarious! Well! Show! They're marching back now to the... Yeah. So they're marching back then to the uh, platoon, getting in position and so what they're going to be doing then on a command of uh, Sergeant Whelan. He was brought forward, each rank be brought forward independently to receive their search then. So it's something to have for themselves then. So. That's just another reason why they put the weapons on the side as well, on, on the ground. So they can, their hands are free to march up and receive what gifts they're, they're given then between the search and a few prizes there as well. So. James Stevens Barracks is one of the oldest barracks in Ireland, is that correct? Oh, it is, yeah. Um, with, with, with the bloods here as well, and before that was the third battalion, but we'd hand over their. I can't remember the date, but yeah, from, the, from English, yeah, it's one of the oldest, yeah. So, with their names being, with their names being called out, it's a mark of recognition then from the Defence Force that you have passed out and brought forward, then you received their certifications then individually again. Wow, what a proud moment. It is, yeah. Because it takes an awful lot of personal courage and personal integrity to actually go through the passing out and become a soldier and a member of the Defence Forces. That's it, you know what I mean? I mean, that's what we're looking for in each individual room to become a team member as well, to hold the values, I mean, to close the heart, as you say, to, to be a soldier. And hopefully they carry this on through the Defence Forces career. They're marching off now so to let the other. Yeah, that's it. So just making, just making room for the next rank to come up, and they're to be marched back to position again. Recruit O'Reilly. Recruit Manica. He wants to go back. Recruit Henry. Recruit Glenn.
Recruit O'Connell. Uso. Recruit Strasny. Uso. Recruit Cochran. Uso. Recruit Toomey. Uso. Recruit Root. Uso. Recruit Erasmus. Uso. Rashi. Oh, hey. 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 Go. And when the recruits have just received their um. The certificates and they go back. They, they do a march while they're standing still. Is that, what's yeah, it's, significance it's, it's for called that? marking time. Yes. So it gives them a chance to get in position and then the, uh, the NCO will bring them to, to a complete stop. Uh, so it's, uh, marking time is just once you go into a certain line and uh, mark time so they can get easily adjust their position and then you give them a start with a stop and then you turn left then back into formation again. So. See the wood between though there's a you can see the lanyards on their left shoulder. Yes. So we we don't get each and single one of them recruits or when you pass out with three star. Um, there's a number of units that get a fair share of the personnel as well. So that not just the one unit, but there's other units then in South or elsewhere to get a, a couple from that as well. So we, at this present time you probably get a, a group of two in Limerick or in Galway. And the same thing like they've got any local lads from Kilkenny like they just didn't make the platoon here. They probably got the platoon in Galway or Limerick. And once they finish training, they'd come to us as well. So as you see, there's different lanyards. You got yes. blue. So yeah, you got. And the red you got and white. Galway. Yeah, red and white is, is the target time. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, individual prizes will now be presented by the general officer commanding one brigade to the recruits on parade. The best shot award. The award for best shot is presented to the recruit who achieved the highest overall score firing their personal weapon during rifle marksmanship training. <coughs> the award for best shot goes to Private Aaron Stone. Red, red, red. Just red shot. So here's now Private Stone, now he's had to get the best shot in the, in the tire. So here's one reward that's been given out. course of the train then they're showing how to look after the weapon take it apart clean it and then they're showing how to fire it and then each day then every few weeks so often they're brought down to the range then and how to the instruction to the weapon itself and then later on they're given a qualification shoot then so so probably stone then he got a uh, top marks then for this then so he achieves the best shot Stevens Award. The James Stevens Award is presented to the recruit who has contributed most to the esprit de corps of the 155th recruit platoon and the common spirit of camaraderie, enthusiasm and devotion to duty amongst the group. This recruit best espouses the Defence Force's values of respect, loyalty, selflessness, physical courage, moral courage and integrity. The James Stevens Award goes to Private Dylan Cosgrave. Uh, award that was brought on a number of years ago, which the uh, James Stevens Award. So as as the LT says, there is both me person who brings the uh, defence force of values uh, and towards the team and gets the team along who's, who's maybe a joker but still gets on with the job, you know what I mean? And when the, when the team's down he brings them up again. And that's very important oh, within recruit oh, training. Oh it is, I mean I mean if if everyone's feeling glum you know what I mean? You, you get not undone. You need someone to lift their spirits. You know what I mean? To, when when things, times get tough, especially when you're overseas, times get a bit tough. You need someone there beside you to lift you up. You know what I mean? And keep it going. And especially to do recruit training because you have to overcome the self doubt and and gain that inner confidence. That's it. I mean, it's all about looking after you. You have to look after your own case, your, yourself, and then your body as well. Not just your body, your, your your section. Then you have to do for to complete the task. You know what I mean? What can you do? Um, 
if you give your buddies a hand or the rest of the platoon as well I mean, there's, there's jobs there and tasks given to them each week um, every day they're given tasks so it's about then just rising up with the challenge and trying to get things done and together as a team and that's one of the things then as well that a combination of this today as I said, the parade ground is, is, is a base of foundation of all major life. I mean, they're getting their uniforms ready, they're doing marching, doing weapons drill, but once they're handed over by the uh, sergeant wheel, they're on their own then, so they work as a team to give a drill, what they can do as a, as a team. So, whatever formation they do, whatever drill they do, it leads on into other stuff like, say, to go to tactics or overseas that you can follow simple commands or formations. I mean, I mean what can they do? You know, so. And he's just got the Best Soldier Award. Yeah, Best Soldier Award, yeah. Best, ready, so this is um, best, basically an award for a per person who's ready, topped all the, all the marks, all the scores and yeah. all the tests. I mean, we improved and kept those scores above. Not, not just scores as well, but just any time their bodies need help, he's there as well to help along. So now the presentation is done, the platoon is going to get ready now for the drill, the ceremony drill they'll be doing. And That's it, yeah, so they're getting ready for the, 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 the drill. So they need the weapons for that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so well, they're going to be brought off and it's going to get ready for the drill. The 155 recruit platoon, under the command of Sergeant Whelan, will now perform a drill display. So tell, tell us, what is a drill display? Basically, uh, for the last couple of weeks, they've been working on um, a number of movements, um, which will be done by the, the recruits. So we give various movements with the weapons, um, especially in their formation as well. So you might see them going in two lines, and I think they're doing an X as well, a wheel. Wow. Yeah, so now um, I didn't actually see it, but that's, it's kind of, it's the basis of all movement uh, for the drill um, for the last couple of years. I mean, well, I done as well, so back in 97. So yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good way to see that they're working together in the formation. And the teamwork and all work. Uh, yes, exactly, you know what I mean? Like, and you, they're working on each part separately. And once those parts are finalized, they bring it all together as well, you know what I mean, as a team then. So you probably you probably hear uh, one of the recruits inside just giving a small command as well. Like, so here here's the um, the recruits coming out with mines the NCOs. So this is all about them now. So you can see now they're they're now two ranks. So as you can see, there's there's markers around. See the black markers? Yes. So there's small this kind of square. Oh yes. Kind of marked out. So within this, then they conduct the drill. The little round yeah. uh, markers the black, on the ground. Yeah. So at the moment now they're splitting off now, so there's a rank going each way. And they probably go lengthways then down. That's it. So now you'll see them to cross over as an X. So you see them going through each gaps. So the two ranks then are crossing over. So it's all about proper timing. Wow, that's beautiful, isn't yeah. it? That's what's called military precision. That's it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you had a high rise building here, you'd be able to see it. Yes. You know what I mean? The company so they're going to go back again, yeah. So to do it a number of times, and then one of the times they'll probably stop and they'll probably do a wheel. That's just beautiful, isn't it, to watch? Because yeah. they've done that for the second time now. That's it. Well, it's not that, and then plus they have to go around the, 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 the markers at the same time as well. So they're, they're walking towards one yeah. another right now. 
And they're doing the... Um, the, the marking time. Marking time. So we well, see the draw touching up, the cover off. So at the moment now we're getting the long arm dressing. So the right arm is, is, is towards the other man's shoulder, giving the spacings. So they're going to be conducting a weapon drill here now at the moment. What so is a weapon drill? Basically, I move with the, with the ceremony weapon. Um, oh, yes. That's it. There you are. The reason why they need a space, you see, then on top, then there's a bayonet attached. So these are yes. the, the, even though they're ceremonial bayonets, but they still have an edge on it. So you, they're basically doing a Mexican wave effect with the hands. Touching the gun. That's it, yeah. And the each ammunition. person. It's very effective for anyone watching because no, they're wearing the white that's gloves. That's it. You know I mean, you, you inspire everything with white gloves, yeah. And when it's done properly, you mean, the effect is, um, is unreal, you know. And you can see the sense of pride in the uh, recruits' faces and their expressions that's and their it. body posture. That's it. I mean, yeah, that's the expression of uh, concentration, you know what I mean? Because they've been at this lo so long, the last few weeks, they may get things right. They're not thinking what's going to be done now, they're thinking what's, what's the next step, always. And pride mammies and daddies that's and it. partners, yeah. boyfriends and girlfriends and that's it. All children the, watching. That's it, and all the, all the phones are out as well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the cameras. Where would we be without our phones now? Yeah. So they're holding up, the, up their rifles. Yeah. What does that signify? Any? Oh, it's just that it's just moving you burn up because they're burning to the shoulder again. Right. So you can't go straight from the hip to the shoulder. You come out, and so it's kind of give you a space between the body and the, and the, and the weapon. Right. So you can actually maneuver to your shoulder. Matching again. There's a reason behind everything that you do, isn't there? In, in it is, it's, it's, as you said, it means about military precision as well. I mean, if you if you can't get things right here on the parade ground, you can't get things right at home or abroad. I mean, as I said, it's, it's the foundation for everything. So we're back in two ranks here to be. Brought looking forward, and probably uh, do, they will be doing another weapon drill again. So, what you saw there is a few people from the front rank and the rear rank going to step forward and back to make a third rank, which are the middle rank, so they're back in three ranks there at the moment. And when you say three ranks, just for it's, it's, it's just three basically lines. three lines, that's it, yeah. We continue So here's another weapons drill. March up towards the the digging trees. So now we're coming near the end of the drill. As you can see the train NCOs come back onto the the parade ground. And the NCOs are they the, the defence force members that trained them? Yes, that's it. They've been here since the start. They went down to collect them in, uh, in in Cork and then brought them forward and got me sworn in and inducted in. And they've been there ever since then, since the train started. So what you have then, you got, because there's three sections, you got three NCOs, kind of the ICs over. Then they also have NCOs and kind of two ICs to got the stuff then for them as well. An excellent display of drill by our new two-star soldiers. Please join me in a round of applause.
Officer Commanding 3rd Infantry Battalion, Lieutenant Colonel Declan Crummy, Deputy Mayor of Kilkenny City, Councillor John Coonan, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and most importantly of all, members of the 155th Recruit Platoon. Erdus is Kushmore Ahas Dunsa, Falta Chriu La Corroid Galair, Gadi Dun Vic Stephon in you, Colonel Broadshaw, at Ha Agraha de Vor Kriach, Kurse Arkok, Queen Kate Quega Sakui. As General Officer Commanding One Brigade, it is my honour to welcome the families and friends of the 155th Recruit Platoon to Stephen's Barracks on the occasion of the ceremonial parade to mark the successful completion of the platoon's initial training in the Defence Forces. I wish to acknowledge and compliment the standard of dress, deportment and drill on today's parade and the impressive contribution of the band of one brigade under the baton of Captain Brian Prendergast. Today's parade marks the conclusion of 15 weeks of intensive and demanding training. This is a significant milestone in your military careers and a day of pride and celebration for all of you, your families, and your colleagues in Oglick Meheran. Recruit training aims to induct the new recruit into the Defence Forces by developing the individual physically, mentally and socially. The training is designed to expand the character, morale and discipline of the recruit and to prepare the individual for a broad spectrum of military operations in unpredictable environments, both at home and on overseas service. It is for this reason that the course has been so demanding. Your physical, mental and tactical capacities have been incrementally developed and tested. You have gained valuable skills and techniques required for service in the Defence Forces. These include your ability to operate as a member of a section, in changeable surroundings and in physically demanding conditions by day and by night. Your training has also taught you a keen sense of duty, patriotism and an awareness of the Defence Forces ethos and traditions loyalty and service to the state. You should now understand the professional ethics and values of the Defence Forces and be able to incorporate these values into your military and civilian lives. Over the past 15 weeks you have been involved in some significant activities which have included battle physical training on Tramor Beach, a 16.8 kilometre loaded march from Three Castles to Stephen Barracks following the platoon's 96 hour field training exercise. The section raced to the top of Blackstaff Hill in Kilworth, which was won by number two section during section field training. These accomplishments were intertwined with completing your basic field craft lessons, weapons training, camouflage and concealment, medical training, communication systems training, and unarmed combat, all of which have helped you to successfully integrate into military life. These activities are designed to develop within you the Defence Forces values, which we've heard of already, of respect, integrity, loyalty, selflessness, physical and moral courage. And to ensure that you, as members of the Defence Forces, accept the responsibility of your rank, both effectively and with competence. Now, having completed the first phase of your military training, you can look forward to the next challenge, your three-star training. This course will teach you to perform fundamental military disciplines that you will carry forward to your units and on into your military careers. The skills that you have learned and will learn will come to the fore in future deployments, both at home and abroad, in assisting on Garda Shikana in aid to the civil power operations, the local authorities in aid to the civil authority operations, in Port Leisha prison or as part of an overseas mission. The Defence Forces is a learning organisation and promotes a culture of lifelong learning. You will be afforded the opportunity for education, personal development and professional experiences at all stages of your careers. This will help you to improve your employability for your multi-skilled roles in the Defence Forces and afterwards in civilian life. On successful completion of your two to three star training, many of you will, in the future, be presented with the opportunity to complete a potential NCO course and many others which will help further your careers and your personal and professional development. 
grab these opportunities with both hands. The 155th recruit platoon is a cohesive unit comprising 17 students from Cork, Kildare, Kilkenny, Galway, Wexford, Dublin, Carlo, Leash, Offaly, and Greece. I wish to particularly congratulate the recipients of the prizes on these fantastic achievements, where we saw uh, recruit Owen Wall getting the best overall recruit, recruit Aaron Stone for the best shot, and recruit Dylan Cosgrave for the James Stevens Award. Your success would not have been possible without the efforts, commitment, and dedication of your extremely professional training staff under the leadership of your company commander, Commandant Tom Boucher, your platoon commander, Second Lieutenant Eamon Hennessy, your platoon sergeant, Sergeant Johnny Whelan, and all of the section NCOs who were involved in your introduction to military life. Can I just add that having served here as Officer Commanding 3rd Infantry Battalion, there is a great uh, pride in this unit as regards training of, at all levels, and today is no exception. The attendance here today of so many families and friends of the members of the 155th Recruit Platoon is heartwarming. It is also wonderful to see the tradition of family members serving the defense uh, family support. Support for, it is, it's an important factor in enabling a soldier to fulfill the myriad of difficult and demanding tasks that he or she will encounter. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank you the families, friends, and loved ones of the 155th Recruit Platoon for the support, patience, and understanding throughout the last 15 weeks. In concluding, I congratulate you once again on your achievement in successfully completing this intensive and demanding course. I encourage you to be confident, strong, resourceful, and versatile soldiers. I am confident that the experiences and friendships you have gained during your training will endure throughout your careers in the Defence Forces. Enjoy the rest of the day's activities and I look forward to meeting you and your families. The, the national anthems we played. Again, usually, ladies and gentlemen, the Irish national anthem will now be played. You are about to stand. All military personnel not on parade will salute. Run! Protest in our run to be! Turkey! His left hand sees us permission to dismiss the parade. Again, usually, ladies and gentlemen, General Officer Commanding 1 Brigade is now departing the parade. You are invited to remain standing. Command to the sergeant, so Sergeant Johnny Wheel. Also, we have the, the band marching up as well, so 
getting close to the end. Again, Yusha, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony for today. The new crowd of two star soldiers will be dismissed from parade by Sergeant Whelan. You were invited for refreshments in the dining hall and NCO's mess, Stephen Barrett. Thank you, and Danish Cabral. So now they'll be mashed off the. That's it. They can breathe. That's it, and breathe they now. That's breathe. it, all done. <laughs> They can breathe and go and hug them. That's you go hug the mammies and girlfriends and, all, yeah, yeah, and have a cup of tea yeah, yeah. And, get, and get ready then for tonight and to enjoy tonight yeah. for a few drinks and dinner then with, with, with their families and friends and in the NCOs. Well, and that's like, a very so. significant evening for the soldiers it, 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 and their families. It is, I mean, it's, it's not celebrated as much as the three star corps because this is now they're inducted into the army now. They, they, they got through the train now, they've been they made into the army now as well. And with all those harder weeks of train as well. So it's about kind of get together now to can just I mean have a few drinks, enjoy themselves as a group with their families, their and friends, all and, and celebrate the hard work. I mean, and then plus then a few laugh and giggles tonight. And you remember this, remember that. And then I think they're off then for a week, and then to recuperate the body and the mind, and they're back then for their their three star course then for more training. And, and yeah. And the three star course that lasts for twelve weeks. Am I correct? That's twelve, yeah, twelve weeks. And as I said, it's, it's a lot more enjoyable, a lot more hands on, a lot more on what we actually. Actually, we actually do at home and abroad, and so you see like, what operation we do with, with the Gardaí, uh, with the fire brigade, all the look the, the response teams that we have here in in, in Kakenny or at home. I mean, it's a lot more. It's a lot more interesting. You know, I mean, to do right train and so on. Yeah, a lot more what we do at home and abroad. Honestly, yeah. Well. On behalf of all of us here in Kilkenny, we'd like to thank every member of the 3rd Battalion mm -hmm. and are here in Kilkenny and all the members of the Defence Force. Thank you for your service mm -hmm. as you definitely do strengthen our nation. Okay, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. All right.